One of the most important parts of writing your dissertation is the research that goes into it. It's really important to have a watertight system of note-taking so that you can use the nuggets of information you find later on. Today, we're going to go through the research structure and techniques that I've found most useful in doing my two dissertations at Durham and Cambridge. Hello everyone, welcome back. Great to see all your smiling faces looking back at me. Today we're talking about research, which is one of the most important topics in the whole dissertation writing process. Good research is important for yourself, for helping you understand the topic area and helping you work out good ideas to use and make your arguments about, and also for the reader of your dissertation, so be your examiner, for showing them that you understand the topic you're talking about, that you have engaged properly with the critical discourse and studies and, and whatever it is that's specific to your topic in the area that you're doing. And it also helps your argument to be as persuasive as possible, because when you state something non-obvious, you have a reputable source to back it up, and that shows it hasn't just come straight out of your head, and so it's much more persuasive. I like to think of the research process as a bit like planting a forest. So you have trees of knowledge that spring up all over the place, some of them in clusters, all densely together, some of them lone and more interspersed, some bigger, some smaller. And then each tree has a trunk, which is the main idea, and that goes straight up, big and strong, spreading out into branches, which are the more detailed parts of each of these ideas. And some of these branches remain bare, but some of them bear fruit, and these are the good ideas. And if you have enough knowledge in one area, the trees are densely packed enough, then these fruitful branches can touch each other, and this is where you make really important, useful connections. So what we're trying to do is collate our reading, our research, into a way that we can maximise noticing when we get these connections. This can be as simple as noticing similarities between texts that you're studying. So for example, in my English dissertation on Kazuo Ishiguro's novels, I noticed that the first three novels he wrote were all written from the same narrative viewpoint, um, first person retrospective narration, and that gave a frame for the first chapter of my dissertation. So how do we plant our forest? and do the best research we can. I think there are three parts to this. Firstly, you've got to prepare the ground, so get your note-taking system sorted. Secondly, you've got to plant the seeds of the forest, so you've got to do the actual research, and we're going to be talking about different ways of doing it, different things that you can use to help, your, help you find what you need to find. And lastly, you've got to gather the fruit, look for useful connections between different ideas. As always, links and timestamps in the video description below. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Um, don't feel like you need to watch the whole video, skip around um, to the bits that are most relevant for you. The first thing you want to do is set up your note-taking system. And I use Google Docs for mine, which I think is fantastic. You can access it everywhere. And the thing that I thought was particularly good is you can create custom styles um, for different headings. And this makes it really easy to indent different articles under different headings uh, for how important they are. You can also create a table of contents right at the start of your document and that makes it very easy to see all the things that you've read and also you can click on each of the individual titles and it will jump straight to that place in the document so it's really easy to navigate your way around it even if the document gets quite long. What I'd do is everything that I thought was important from the articles that I'd read, copy and paste that into the document and if I had a thought about it I would indent and write that thought out. And it's very important to do this as you're going through because when you come back to it in two or three months you're not going to know quite what you were thinking about when you first included this thing. Having one really big document like this is brilliant for dissertation writing because you can control F to find any keyword. So if you're writing about something in your dissertation you're like, oh I think that there was a bit in something about exactly this little thing but you can't remember where it was, you can quickly find it and make use of it straight away. Similarly, I would always put KEY, K-E-Y, in capitals at the start of quotations I thought were really important, because then if I was scrolling through my document, those bits would jump out at me. Or if I was looking for inspiration, I could just control F, K-E-Y, and then filter through the bits that I thought were most interesting or most important. Aside from Google Docs, there's a whole swathe of other different programs you can use to help organise your dissertation reading. I like Google Docs because it's very simple, it's always with you, and you can do the thing with the custom styles and table of contents. Um, but Mendeley is meant to be fantastic. It does clever things like create your bibliography for you, which is very, very good. 
um, make sure you have the Chrome extension as well so that whenever you're reading something you can quickly add it to your Mendeley files. Another option is to have a page set up in Notion that does the same thing. Um, and you can use the Notion Chrome extension so whenever you're reading an article that's interesting and relevant you can add it to your bibliography page in Notion and then you'll have it there. And if you use the tag feature as you go along then whenever you want to find something under a specific heading you'll be able to search it there. The specific thing you use doesn't really matter but I think what's really important is to be able to browse through it easily so that you can refresh your mind about what you've been reading before and also so that new things can crop up and spark ideas. So it's like this idea of the branches touching each other that I mentioned earlier. Once you've set your note-taking system up, this is where the fun and hard work bit comes in, actually reading and doing your research. So I'm going to focus mostly on secondary sources of information, which is academics and other people writing about primary studies or texts. Generally, secondary sources are what you'll spend most of your time reading about, and for primary research, you should really consult your department. There are several ways to find your secondary reading, and probably having done two or three years of university already, you'll have ways that you like doing. As a first port of call, Google Scholar is fantastic because you can search for whatever you want from any web page and the range of results that it trawls is seriously extensive. What's also brilliant is you can link it to your institution so that it pulls up all the full text links for the different articles on the right hand side so that you can access them straight away from the Google Scholar search page. The other main thing I use Google Scholar for is references. If you go to the quote signs just by your result then you'll find the correct citation in Chicago or APA or any of the other formats just there ready for you to copy and paste into your bibliography. Obviously do check them but they're normally pretty good. As brilliant as Google Scholar is, it can't get behind the paywalls that for example lots of legal research papers are behind. So make sure that you're searching widely through those other databases and not just using Google Scholar. If you can't find something on Google Scholar then your university search tool is normally the next place to go to and these will obviously search the physical libraries and the ones that are digitally available. Something I didn't take enough advantage of initially were the university librarians and they are a fantastic source of knowledge because they see students do this every single year. They know exactly the kind of things that you need and can help you get hold of them. So if uh, the first two, Google Scholar and your university search tool don't work, very much worth asking the librarians if they know of a different way of finding it um, or whether they can get hold of something that you need. Aside from searching for areas and topics that you think might be useful using keyword searches on, for example, Google Scholar, a really good way of finding new leads for areas that you're already interested in is using the footnotes that authors themselves use in their articles. Whenever you're reading something, have a look at who that author cites in their footnotes because so often you'll find that they talk about someone very important who wrote something just previously or maybe they disprove that and going back to that original source can often lead to interesting discoveries. The best way I've found of doing this is as you're reading the article to start making a little list somewhere of other potential sources from that article that might be relevant and then once you've finished with the article that you're reading at the moment going and flicking through those and seeing if they might be useful. This way you can focus on one thing at a time and make sure you're getting the most out of everything that you're reading as you're reading it. Link to that, the final thing I'm going to say about actually doing the research for your dissertation is making sure that you're keeping it relevant. This sounds a bit trite but throughout my university career what I'd try and do in the morning was look at myself in the mirror and ask myself what is most useful for me to do today and that's a really useful question to ask yourself while you're doing your reading for your research, you need to keep questioning and saying, is this the most useful thing that, I'm, that I can be doing? And if you're reading a really interesting article and all of it is really interesting, then you should read the whole thing. But if you read the first two paragraphs or two pages and find that they were interesting but then the third page goes on to a different topic, then you just stop reading right there and go and do something different. Because not everything that you read is going to be useful and not even the whole of a good article is going to be useful necessarily. What you're looking to do is to cherry pick the best ideas and quotes so that you can use them to make your ideas better and also to put into your essay and give it more weight by making it more persuasive using other people's opinions. So the best way I think of starting this is looking at the introduction or the abstract, seeing what the flavour of the piece is and then using that to go to the particular bits in the article that are most relevant to you. The key takeaway from this is don't waste time 
reading all of something that's not relevant because you're just wasting your time and you're not going to get any benefits from it. The third part of doing really good research for your dissertation, the final piece of the puzzle, if you will, is looking for connections between the different things that you've read. So you have your note-taking system, you start filling it up with highlights from the articles that you're reading, and then you want to review those highlights and see if and how they can fit into the arguments and ideas that you've already got sort of percolating through and want to write about in your dissertation. So the best way, I think, of using the system you set up and research that you've been doing to generate new ideas and connections is to read a few articles around a specific area and then ask yourself three questions. You want to ask yourself, what has that reading taught you? You want to ask yourself whether what it's taught you is specifically relevant to your project or whether it might be. And third, you ask yourself whether what you've read is relevant to another part of your project. This kind of awareness of what you've been reading is really useful and I find even simple things like the process of fitting your highlights into the structure of your note-taking system um, is very useful for making these connections. Once you've taken those cues then you can actively have a go at thinking out how these things might work together and how they might work with your argument. Thanks for watching the third part of how to write an excellent undergraduate dissertation. I hope it's been helpful. Three things for you to do. Firstly, set up your note-taking system, whether that's on Google Docs, Notion or Mendeley. The second thing for you to do is watch the next video in the series where we're talking about the importance of writing your ideas down. You can find it somewhere here. And finally, the third thing for you to do is like and subscribe to click that bell button it makes all the difference to me and it takes two seconds for you. So thank you very much for watching and till next time.